Hello and welcome back to another Rush Duel Links deck profile. Today we're taking a look at something a little bit spicy. This is Monarchs, or more specifically, Blue Eyes Monarchs, because after the changes to Blue Eyes Rain, we can play just about anything we want with Blue Eyes. So what better place to put a bunch of cards that don't have a skill and seemingly don't really have a home? So first off, we'll talk about the skill itself, Blue Eyes Rain, because this is quite important for the deck. So this skill can be used if your deck contains seven or more level five or higher monsters. So that already is basically always the biggest drawback of both this and the red eye skills is that we have to play just an absolute ton of tribute monsters. No level seven or higher dragon type monsters with 1900 defense or lower basically to stop us from playing Dragius for the most part. Requirement from turn two onward, if there are no face up level eight or higher monsters on your field, we can shuffle one card from our hand into the deck and reveal a Kyber Man in our hand to add a blue eyes bright dragon from our deck to our hand. So Kyber Man, pretty important for the deck again. Basically, if we find this card in our hand, we can reveal it, put a card from our hand back into the deck and change that card into a blue eyes bright dragon, which we can then cheat out with said Kyber Man. The blue eyes bright dragon, obviously very cool card, 2500 attack and 2500 defense, very good stat line. Name becomes Blue Eyes White Dragon Monarchs in the hand, which is relevant because of Kyber Man. Send the top card of the deck to the graveyard. This turn, this card's name becomes Blue Eyes White Dragon, which is actually a little bit relevant now. And it gains 500 attack. Then if we have a face-up legend normal monster on our field, we can destroy a face-up level 8 or lower monster on our opponent's field, which again is pretty good. But we are only playing a single copy of the Blue Eyes Bright Dragon. The reason for that is it is a limit 3 and we want to be playing some of our monarchs, which are also limit 3. But Blue Eyes White Dragon's ability to change its name is now relevant because we do have a new spell card in Burst Stream of Destruction that requires us to have a Blue Eyes on the field. So that does mean this deck has got a little bit of a boost all around. But let's talk about our new boss monster, Wilhel the Mega Monarch. So 2400 attack is not great, not gonna lie. That's not the stat we really want to see. We really would like this to be 2500, but it is what it is. 1000 defense is very relevant for a lot of the other Monarch cards. And level 8 is relevant because it does mean we can attack with it after using Soul Drake. So all things considered, it's just that 100 attack missing for this card to actually be really, really strong. The other thing to take note of is this is a Cyburst monster, which again does come up. We can tribute summon this card in attack position by tributing one face up level 5 or higher monster with 1000 defense. So in this deck, that's only really going to be relevant for Will Held the Wisdom one, which we'll talk about in a little bit since that is a 1000 defense level 5 monster. But being able to tribute this out for only one monster basically is a nice discount. During the turn that we tribute summon this card in attack position, your opponent chooses one card on their field and you destroy it. So this is an interesting effect. Basically, if your opponent is a little bit resource starved and doesn't have a ton of cards, this can punish them immensely. If your opponent, for example, manages to get out a maximum monster but doesn't have any other card and then we summon this, well, guess what? They have to send their maximum monster to the graveyard. So that's not the best for them. But if your opponent is in a plentiful position, they do have a lot of cards on the field. They basically get to choose what they lose, which can be a little bit detrimental because for the most part, they're just going to send their most useless card to the graveyard. It could just be a back row they've just been sitting on. It could just be one of their weak monsters. So we do oftentimes find ourselves in a situation where the Wilhelm the Mega Monarch doesn't really accomplish much, but there are also just as many situations where it is absolutely fantastic. The next up, we'll talk about Soul Drake. So during the main phase that you normal or special summon this card, send two face up level four or lower effect monsters from your field to the graveyard, which will usually be itself and something else. Special summon a level eight light attribute dragon monster from your graveyard face up to your field. This turn, your level seven and lower monsters cannot attack. So that means we'll be locked into only attacking with our mega monarchs, our bright dragon and our blue eyes white dragon. Obviously, the only two targets we can bring back with Soul Drake is the Blue Eyes White Dragon and the Blue Eyes Bright Dragon. But that shouldn't be too much of an issue because, again, the Blue Eyes Bright Dragon is searchable. So we either want to keep it in our graveyard so we can bring it back with Soul Drake, or we want to put it back into our deck with something like Siesta Torero so that we can search out again using our skill by having the Kyber Man. Next up, we have Rising Light Angel Essel. And Essel can be very important in this deck. We do want to have a lot of cards in the graveyard and some very specific stuff in the graveyard. But also getting those extra bodies can be extraordinarily valuable when we're playing so many tribute monsters. So Essel is just, in general, a really strong card in here. Now, we're not going to get the maximum Essel value because this deck is not going to be very good at pushing for damage on turn two. But it is an option if your opponent doesn't open three monsters. But being able to, again, mill the graveyard and get a free body is always going to be really nice for this sort of deck. Then we have Zeus the Wisdom Vassal. So this is a pretty cool card. Once again, Cyburst, 1000 defense, only 800 attack though. During the turn you normal summon this card, we can shuffle two monsters 
with a thousand defense from our graveyard into the deck. So this effect, by the way, and this requirement has tripped me up a few times. So we have to already have two monsters in our graveyard that have a thousand defense, and then we need a third monster with a thousand defense that we're going to be taking back to our hand, which means we do effectively need three monsters with a thousand defense in our graveyard before we want to activate this effect. Because its effect is, your opponent sets one spell card from their graveyard to their field. Obviously, that's really bad. But then we can add a level 5 or higher monster with a 1,000 defense from our graveyard to our hand. So logically, we want to use this to get back Wilhel the Wisdom Monarch, or the Mega Monarch, if we already have access to Wilhel. Use Wilhel the Wisdom Monarch to pop the opponent's spell card that we got back with Zeus, and then tribute over it ideally into Wilhel and force them to lose another card. But again, if we only have, for example, one Wilhel and let's say a Rising Light Angel Essel in the graveyard, we would shuffle those two back into our deck, then give our opponent a spell card, and then we'd be unable to take a level 5 back from our graveyard to our hand because we no longer have one in there. So all we've done is shuffle some cards into our deck and given our opponent a plus one, which is pretty catastrophic. So try not to make this mistake. But overall, Zeus is really, really good. If we're able to use its effect, we can effectively plus, then our opponent pluses, but then we'll tribute over our Zeus to get out Wilhel, which is a minus for us, but then we also minus our opponent again because of Wilhel's effect to pop our opponent's back row. Next up, Siesta Terrero, another really good staple card. Now, the primary use of this is to keep shuffling cards back into our deck, but occasionally our opponents will have monsters that we can't attack over, and Siesta Terrero is a great way to flip them down to attack over. The only time it really becomes an issue is when we're playing against specifically Blue Eyes, or I guess this would come up against Yami Ruler as well. Monsters that have incredibly high defense, if we flip them over, we can't then just clear them with an attacking Wilhel. So in that situation, having the Wilhels can be a bit of a detriment. Next up, we have Ultimate Flag Beast Boltracorn. Again, fantastic staple monster. Being able to turn off your opponent's back row is incredible, and this card should be in every deck that you can fit it. And then we have Wilhel the Wisdom Monarch, a level 5 monarch of choice. During the turn, you tribute summon this card in attack position. Look at one face down spell trap on your opponent's field. Then, if that card is a spell card, you can destroy it. So, we found in testing that we would hit traps so, so much with this card, and hitting a trap isn't inherently bad because now you know there is a trap, you know what it is, you know where it is, so when you do eventually draw your back row hate, you can pop it or you can try to play around that trap card as much as you can. But if you do get a spell card, you do just get free value. You get to take a card off of your opponent, which is really, really strong. So that's what you strive for as much as you possibly can. And then our legend, Blue Eyes White Dragon. We have this in here because again, we're playing Burst Stream of Destruction. It's got really nice stats. We can bring it back with Soul Drake, we can cheat it out with Kyber Man, and it pairs quite nicely with the Bright Dragon. Then we have the Burst Dream of Destruction itself. So this card is limit one for a reason. If we have a face-up Blue Eyes White Dragon on our field, destroy all monsters on your opponent's field. That is Ray Geki. That is so unbelievably powerful, but we cannot attack with Blue Eyes White Dragon that turn. So if we're very, very well set up, we could summon out, let's say, a Blue Eyes or a Blue Eyes Bright, activate the Burst Dream, and then tribute over one of these monsters and then get three direct attacks in, which can be really, really powerful. But that's going to be very few and far between because you'd have to have a very large number of cards and be very well set up in order to get that off. But it is an option. Burst Dream Destruction is also a fantastic way to out, again, anything. Face up, face down, maximums, it does not matter. Bam, it is gone. And speaking of a card that does something very similar, Tribute to the Doomed. Obviously, we have to discard a card, but we can destroy one monster. Again, face up, face down, maximum, doesn't matter. Tribute to the Doomed will deal with it. Then we're on the three copies of Particle Acceleration, and this is in here because we are on three, six, eight Cyburst monsters. That is the most of any type that we have in the deck. Even if we look at our dragons, we're only actually playing the two bosses and the three soul drakes, which is only five. So going for the Cyburst back row removal does make more sense. And then finally, we have our trap cards negate attack. Shouldn't really have to explain this. It is in every deck. It is absolutely fantastic. Being able to stop maximum attacks, being able to stop three attacks, is just really, really strong. And then Buffett Slime, very similar. It doesn't work on maximums, but it's still very, very powerful. So this is the deck. And what do we think of this deck? So in testing, our win rate with this deck was actually pretty good. We were winning a lot of our games. Now, we did lose quite a lot of games, and a lot of those games were actually too psychic. But the reason we were losing those games were because we would not find any back row, and we kept going second. And that seemed to be the biggest issues with this deck. If we don't find a back row and we don't gain that card advantage, it can feel a little bit slow and it can feel a little bit sluggish. 
The other issue, obviously, if we've mentioned it a whole bunch of times, is we are running seven tribute monsters, and there are just so many games that we will just sit there with like two will hells in our hand and be like, well, do we want to just tribute over our monsters and just get these out of our hands and basically go negative for no benefit? And the amount of times that we also have will hell and our opponent doesn't have any back row and we can't really do anything with it also does kind of suck. I think overall, my opinion of this deck is it is solid it is an okay deck it feels reasonably good to play but i am always a very risk averse player in general i don't like playing decks that feel inconsistent and decks that brick more often than other decks so i don't think this deck is necessarily for me and because of that i'm not going to pretend i necessarily played this deck perfectly I do think I tend to pilot decks reasonably well, but I did not necessarily vibe with this deck in the same way that I have others, so your mileage may vary. But that being said, the deck is still very solid, it's still able to summon multiple big boss monsters, and it's able to have them stick to the field reasonably well, which is pretty good. One other thing I would say is that this deck's matchups can get a little bit funky. I would say this deck should lose almost every single time against royal rebel realistically we don't have the tools to deal with that deck but a lot of decks are in that exact same situation so that's really nothing new as for some other decks uh it can get a bit funky like i said against psychic we had very very poor results a lot of the games were basically non-games where we were dead on the second or third turn without really being able to do anything we were just kind of set three monsters pass and then we'd just be dead in a couple of turns and we just didn't draw anything to be able to help us deal with it and those games can all add up and start to feel like the deck is underperforming but i think realistically those are outliers and that's not going to be overall representative of the deck as a whole but let's fire in some replays so i can show you what i've been talking about 